Hello and welcome. So, your registration site is live. You are taking in registrations. The fees are coming in, but now you need to start generating some reports. You want to see how many people are coming in. Your supervisor would like a copy of that report. Maybe your partners who are outside ASU want to see it as well. And you have some cancellations to process for attendees and those attendees need refunds for their fees and your sponsor has just given you a spreadsheet and these people need to be added to the registration site so they can be checked in. What do you do? Well, you're in Stova and we have answers for you. Welcome to this master class, uh, which is a deep dive into the registration module. In particular, I am your host, Steve McGillivray. I work here at ASU in the Office of University Events and Protocol. And that's what we're going to cover today. All the things you need to manage or administrate your event registration sites. And we're going to dive right in. I know I've scheduled this for 90 minutes. I don't think we're going to need to take uh, all that time. So we'll hopefully get you out of here early. But first, as always, I start with a few housekeeping details before we dive in. First thing. As you may have heard, uh, this session is being recorded and we will send everyone who registered a link to the video once it's done being processed. Uh, also, as we go through the system, you will possibly see some other names pop up. Of course, you'll see Stova, but you might also see Aventry or you might see eTouches. It's still the same system we've been using at ASU for six years. They rebranded over a year ago, but it takes time for some of the different features to finally be updated. But whether you see Stova, Aventry retouches, it's all the same system that has not changed much uh, in six years. Uh, there'll be a few things that are out of scope today during our trainings, but I'll, I'll mention those when we hit them. And as always, as I'm going through this deep dive, if you have questions, feel free to add them to the chat of the Zoom or simply unmute your microphones and ask during the demonstration. But there will be time at the end for any final questions. Okay, so let us just dive in. And what we're going to cover here first are the, I think, the two most useful reports in event registration sites. The first is the summary report, and the other is the registrant list. And especially the registrant list, there are lots of bells and whistles to that kind of report, so we'll be spending a lot of time there. And then we're going to point out some other reports and features, uh, available event registrations, custom reports, so if you cannot create the reports you want under a registrant list or summary report, there's a way to, to create custom reports, and also through that feature to share them with people who don't have Stova accounts. Uh, we'll point out some of the other useful reports that may interest you, and we'll just touch base on a few of the special features that you may need to use as the event coordinator of a registration site. So we're going to dive right in, and as usual, I always start by logging into my account through our uh, our support page using my ASU Write ID. And I didn't hit the ASU SSO, but that can happen. I've been in here earlier today, so I need to find my event. And today I'm going here. Now, again, a quick pro tip to get someplace in uh, my registration site quickly I could right click on this name and I get a little contextual menu. And if I hold over, I get these same links which are in the registration settings when I'm inside the registration site. So just a little pro tip there, I can get to summary report or registrant list or reports and functions from here. But don't worry if you forget to simply go into your registration site and then up here, I'm gonna start with the summary report. Well, the summary report, as the name implies, is gonna give you a snapshot of everything that it can report on regarding your event. It'll start with total registrations, keeping track not only of numbers, but if your event has fees, it will keep track of those numbers as well. Cancellations and so forth. 
down here, it's keeping track of numbers based on the categories and subcategories you have programmed. And as we're seeing here, not just subcategories, but the plus sign is we have in this event, and I didn't, I didn't have a slide to tell you about this, I'm using my Stova Conference and Expo event, which I've used during other master classes, the Event Builder Series. And I had programmed under payment settings a early bird special. So this is telling me how many people have signed up for the early bird and how many have come in regular. That's nice. And I also get information on the different statuses of my attendees. The most common is confirmed. There will be cancellations, but I can also keep track of how many attended if I'm using either one of the check-in systems built into Stova or I manually change people's registration status. So I'm not going to go through all the things I'm showing here other than to show you that they're there, but I want to show you is that this can be customized. This page can be customized. I'm showing sessions here. Uh, I'm showing merchandise I'm selling and getting those numbers. I'm getting how people are paying me. I'm even getting how many people are using the discount codes I programmed for this event. Lovely, but there could be a lot of things here that I don't need to see. And to customize the summary report, just click on this button, Customize Report, and this will show you all the different features that are currently being displayed on this page. So we're not using any of the approval processes or the lodging and travel. Uh, I definitely don't need any of these other account level fields, which are uh, do not enter. I probably don't need that. If I, those are sorting me sessions as they are called. I don't need external language. I'm not doing smoking or bed preference. That's all again, the hotel stuff lovely and so after I've saved that now this will just display how I've customized if I want to focus my on just one of these sections as you can see there is a only show this section and to change that it changes to a show all sections lovely okay I can export this report to a spreadsheet. I can also export it as a PDF. And if there's some custom stat I want to add to this report, I can do that as well. One of the uh, nice features about summary report is that these lines on this report are dynamic. And by that, I mean, if I click on one of these lines, it will open up a different report. Let's just hit uh, general admission. Oh, let's just hit exhibitors. And this is actually taking me to our next report, the registrant list, but it has pre-sorted this display to show me people who were exhibitors only. So I've got 21 people who are exhibitors. Okay, lovely that I can jump here to that. Now it also has kept this page open if I need to go back in the tab, but I'm gonna stay here on registrant list. I'm gonna transition to this and talk about all the different features here on registrant list. If you need to get the registrant list directly, again, you can go over to your pull down menu and you'll find it here. If I click this, it's gonna give me the full list unfiltered, uh, unfiltered results, okay? Now, when you see a report like this, I call this a what you see is what you get when you click the export data button. Okay, it's going to show you these fields by default. Uh, the export data button is how you could generate a spreadsheet or a PDF of this information. To the right of that is what we call a view. The selection of fields displayed is the view, and you can customize your views. Next to that is the filter. So if you want to filter by the status, registration status, or categories, you can do that and you can customize and save those filters as well. Below that, it's giving me the list of how many records have been found currently uh, in my site. 
in the middle here. So it's showing me I've got more pages to see. I'm just seeing a limited number of records here. And if I go farther right, I can see that this is currently set for 50 records per page. So if I want to see more and but have to scroll through, I can change that number and that will affect pages here. It gives me a list chronologically based on registration timestamps, date and timestamps. Okay, I just want to cycle through these pages. I can click on a pull down menu and go to a different page or I can click on the advanced or if I just want to go to the end of a list, I can click fast forward here as well. Okay, in the main list, we have a selection column and we'll talk about the uses of this a little later. Next to that is the conferee number, also known as the reference number. So every attendee gets a reference number when they come in, and here is what that number is. Uh, these are the columns of default. Couple of features about these columns is, as you saw when I hold my mouse over, these headings are link, and this is how you can sort this, these results based on that column. So if you want to sort by last name, lovely. You want to reverse sort, click it again, and you reverse sort by alphabet, okay? If one of the fields you use has uh, options programmed in them in the dropdown at the question, you will see the field list here where you can select the option you want to filter the report by. Well, what I also want to point out here is in the search, so it gives you a field if you're looking for something specific. I'm going to look for somebody who should be here. But is not showing up here. You know, I think I may have to clear my filters and try that again. Actually, let's see, what's your first name? Or is it a last name? Let me try somebody else who should be here. Maybe that is a first name. Okay, well, let's pick somebody who we actually see here. Okay, it's gonna be Laurel. I know there's a Laurel there. Now, if I didn't know Laurel's full name, I just was looking for anyone whose name begins with the first four letters, and I do a search, I come up with no results. That's because this is a filter right next to that that by default asks for equals. But I can click that button and change to any of these other, I don't know what they call them in, in filter categories here. But if I'm just looking for a part of a word, you'd want to use the contains. But look at all these great options. You just want to see if a field is empty or it has a value or if it's greater than or equals to. But again, if I hit contains, I'm looking for anyone with those first four letters. Now I can find, it just happens there's only one person in my list. But that's how you can use that. You also notice that that icon changes from that little funnel to a funnel C to show me that I have put a filter in place. And as you saw, I can clear away any filters currently in use. Okay. Now, as I said, this is a what you see is what you get. So how do I change what I see? Well, to do that, you would change or create a new view. There are two different ways to do that. You can click on the pull down menu and start with a add new view. And that would start from the very beginning uh, of the uh, creation window. Or you can click on the little widget icon and open up sort of the master list. And I like to go this route because I can then clone one of my other views, especially the default view, and it saves me a little time because there's always some fields I want to use in this. So I've just cloned this view. And often a view I make, especially for events with fees, is I want to see how the revenue is coming in. And I first thing I do is give this view a name. Second, I decide, is this a view that only I can see or is this one I want the rest of my team to access as well? If you want your team to access it, you must check this box and then they will see it. If it's just for you, uncheck that box and only you will see this view. One word of caution though, 
is if you intend to clone this registration site for future use, only the views that have the checkbox checked will be cloned. The ones that you created for just yourself will not. Okay, just keep that in mind. Down here under recorder, reorder columns is where we can begin to add our own or adjust what we see here. I'm going to click the add columns. And here we have some general features. I don't really need to see the cancellation dates or the modified dates. I'll keep uh, those. I'm not using hotel booking options. Attendee info, those are the questions I asked my attendees as they came in. What they're all showing here is fine, although I might want to see company. I'm not worried about seeing the agenda sessions, but I could re generate reports that way. Uh, down here, I'm going to pass these others. Now we're getting into the money aspect, the billing and payment. And what I do for show me the money is I want to see the amount I've received from the client. I want to see how much, if any, is outstanding. Uh, I want to know what the total cost is. And I may add payment means just in case I have multiple payment methods. I want to see if they're just pay me by invoice or check or uh, quick pay. And once I've selected all of my fields, I hit save and exit. And I'm taken back to the uh, editor view. And it's added my fields at the bottom here. And you can reorder these the way you would like to see them. So in my instance, I like to put the total cost ahead of amount received. And then, right, simple logical math to follow the progression from total cost, amount received, and what's outstanding. Um, and you saw I just had to click on the little double bar, dotted bar on this side and move them around to change their order in the report. When I'm all set to go, I just hit save and exit and save and exit one more time. And it will take me right into my newly created report. Okay, lovely. Uh, and here I can see what I expect to see. So that's the total cost. Someone actually paid me and there's no money outstanding. Wonderful. Somebody owes me some money here. We will be talking to our sponsors. Okay. Uh, another thing you can adjust are the filters. By default, your registration might go to what is called the default filter. And the default filter will include both confirmed and canceled of registrations and that can throw people off because they look at this number total records and if it doesn't match what they expect for confirmed they get a little panicky and they just don't realize that they might be seeing cancellations as well so uh, i believe our new templates include a confirmed registrations but in case they don't this is how you can create your own custom filter once again you can click on the pull down menu and hit the add new filter or you can go into the widget and start from here with a clone or just hit add new filter here. One thing I didn't point out on the views is this column. If there's a uh, filter or a view that you turn to over and over, you can set it as the default. And then whenever you go there, it's going to be the first one pulled up. So I'm just going to add a, uh, a new one. I'm going to do confirmed again. Actually, let's do a little special, so I'm not doing duplications. I'm going to see my confirmed exhibitors, and this is just another way of doing it. Once again, I have to decide if I want my team to see it, or is this just for me, and I'll let my team see it. So you can choose by filtering by a category, and that's what I've opted to do here for my purposes. Uh, filter by status. So again, I'm just looking for confirm, but you can access or add any of these. Okay. And here are some other filters that you can use if you want to know registrations coming in between certain dates or canceled between certain dates. You can create those filters to right here. I'm going to hit save and exit. It has been added to my list. I believe it's going to go just like views to go right into my new filter. Yes, it is. So now that's what I expected to see 21 exhibitors for my review. Okay, so that's 
So we've navigated the platform and we've created our new views and our new filters. Uh, just to show you how it looks to export this information, click the export button and you will be asked which format you would like uh, it to be exported in. Yeah, I could do that, but I just won't worry, worry about opening it up. Lovely, download complete. Okay. Some other features here in Registrant List are access to attendee profiles. If you need to edit information for a particular attendee or attendees, you can do that in the profile. To access the profile, you would locate them. Let me clear my filters here so we can start all over. I'll go back to the default. I think the general admissions are going to be more useful to us. Um, to access the attendee profile, locate the attendee and then click on click on their conferee number and now I am in their attendee profile. At the top are some features that you may find useful if you need to cancel a registration you would come in and click this button here. If you need to resend an email or send a new email, a custom email, you can do that individually by coming into the attendee profile, clicking send email, and then selecting the email from the list. This includes triggered emails and scheduled emails. Okay. So if you have a special message to send to a group, a time change or uh, follow-up information, you probably want to create a scheduled email and then use it as a custom here so you can select. What's also nice about this feature is, do I have, well, let's just go to initial, initial confirmation. Oh, okay, I don't know why that's giving me that. Let's go back to what I was showing. Hmm, hot. Um, what's nice about this feature is that if you scroll down, and if you remember our user group, or our user group, our, our um, event builder series, our emails have merge fields to pull information from the event and the uh, attendees registration. And this will give you a preview of what those emails look like. This is supposed to be the first name merge code and it's pulling their name, great. So this is a way of taking a quick look at if your merge fields are working. Okay, I'm not gonna send this email. I'm just gonna hit cancel, I'm back here. The confirmation page is the, uh, what we also call the registration record. If there's some reason you need to review that, you can do that by clicking that button and it will show you that page for this attendee. Generate a badge. So again, we have a badging system built into Stova. We showed you in the uh, event manager class how to generate badges for bulk printing. Uh, but if you just need to make a badge onesie twosie, you can go into the attendee profile and generate a badge from here. And you can also generate an invoice for this client just another word about Stova is if they owe you money, it's an invoice if they have paid the same button for a receipt. Okay, the system knows uh, if they've been bad or good. Okay, a uh, couple of things to know about uh, changing attendee information is where is the information located? The attendee info section will include not only all the questions in your attendee info section, but also include their registration status. So as I said, when they register successfully, they are automatically called confirmed. If uh, you are keeping attendance in your registration site and need to change someone's status manually, this is where you would come. Simply select attended from the list and hit save and stay or save and exit to get out, okay? If you need to change the fees that they had charged, it's gonna be under selection and fees, or if you're just changing categories, you can, as an event coordinator, change people's categories. If someone came in the wrong way to your site, even without fees, and they need to be, you need them to be in a different category, you can come in to their profile in this section and you will find their categories where you can and where you can update them or change them or add the discount code. 
This is also where you can update their selection of sessions for your event, okay? Now, if you do anything here that changes how much money they owe you, well, you either need to process a refund if they paid you too much, or you'll have to figure out how they're going to pay you for a balance if it increases how much they owe, okay? Same thing with options. If there was availability of options, you could select it here. All right, next section is the transactions that actually have happened in this event. And you'll always see two lines. Now, I'm not sure, this must have been an import because you'll always see two lines. One is the transaction amount. How much does the event cost someone? And then there'll be a payment received transaction. So this is one of my exhibitors I happen to click on. And let's say that they uh, paid me for their fees outside the system. I now want to record that they have paid, so I'm not gonna send them nasty notes that they owe me money. And I'm gonna say that they gave me a check. If I wanted to write some notes here, the check number or something like that, I could. And I'm gonna hit save and exit. And now this person is showing, oops, I don't know why it zoomed. Show me a zero balance, this person has now paid, okay? Now, if I'm dealing with a cancellation and a refund, that's a little different. Um, first off, if you are doing a refund of a quick pay payment, you have to return the money in the quick pay system. That's an out of scope to show you how to do that, but you'll need a quick pay refund account that, that'll be connected to the account used by your registration site. You would go into quick pay, locate the transaction, and send the money back through quick pay. We have a, a video on our support site to show you how to do that. But you probably wanna come back to Stova and show that that transaction has happened and that you've refunded the money and that they no longer, you know, your books are balanced because of that cancellation. So first I'm going to cancel this registration. I'm going to just go up to the top and hit cancellation. And the system knows I've got a paid event here and it's at giving me the options on how you're going to give the money back. I mean, again, to our bookkeeping, not literally giving the money back. Do I give them the full refund? Do I give them a refund minus any kind of a cancellation fee or extra fees I'm charging? Or do I simply say they're canceled, but they are not owed a refund? That depends on my event and the policies that we've determined uh, for our department or for this particular event, okay? In my example, I'm gonna give them a full refund, leave it at the defaults, hit submit. So it's gonna mark this person now as canceled. And down here, it's now added a cancellation and that they are now owed money. And so now I would go in, once I have finished going into some system or I've canceled the check or however for this person and select refund to record that I have simply sent them a new check. Okay. Again, most likely you're using quick pay and so you would simply be uh, noting that uh, the refund has already been processed through quick pay. Although one note about that is that for some reason the quick pay does not show up in reports when you do refunds. So if you wanted to just simply say, call it a credit card refund just to be more clear and that it shows up in reports, you might wanna do that. Okay, so again, this person canceled, I've already given the money back, they have a zero balance, we're all good there. So that's how you handle attendee transactions in the attendee profile. This section is telling you all the different edits that have happened in this attendee's registration site, regardless of who did it. Uh, it could be the, so this was created by this person that was up, it was an upload to this registration site, fine. If it was the actual attendee, their email address would be here. Uh, and then some of my staff came in and made some changes to this information and it's noted here. I don't believe it tells you exactly what they changed, 
uh, but at least you've got a timestamp on when changes were made, especially if it's the attendee coming back to modify their registration, you can, you can see what's going on. And then at the bottom is their email history. So every time they get an email, whether it's a triggered email or it's a scheduled email or one that you've manually sent, a record is kept here. If you get an attendee who says, I didn't get the confirmation email, well, first thing you can do is go into their profile and take a look and see if it was sent. If it wasn't, then you can go up to the top and send it manually. Okay, and then you might want to check on why the system didn't send them a confirmation email. As I said, these folks were uploaded, so that's why I'm not seeing any emails in this list. Okay. One other thing to note about uh, this, I need to clear my filters and start from, let's go back to the default view. Let's say it's registration date. Yeah. So what may happen once in a blue moon is uh, when you are ready to take your site live, you've gone and done what we've told you as far as uh, uh, clearing test registrations and you have gone to the event info page and changed pre-events to live and you forgot to hit the save and stay button and you left the page which means the registration site is still in pre-event and still marking your attendees as test as they come in have no fear there's a way to uh, fix those because as you see here in my example we've got some test registrations are marked as test and these folks should have been confirmed registrations. Another feature of the attendee profiles when they are marked as test is you can go into their profile and you have this feature convert to live. Okay, you can't convert people back to test, but you can convert test to live. It's asking, are you sure you want to do that? Go ahead and click OK. Okay. Actually, one other thing I didn't show you in uh, the last profile, because it didn't happen, is you can put people in groups. Well, what are groups? If you have the group booking feature turned on uh, for your event, that allows a person to add more people to their group, additional attendees to their group, so many people in basically one registration session, if you would. And this is how you can tell who's part of the same group. You can add additional people to groups. You can put people together in groups if they need to be for some reporting purpose. Uh, usually the ad primary attendee who's the first person in is the person who would pay all the fees for a fee-based event. But you can change people to primary or remove them from groups here. Okay. So another thing I wanted to show you is how to update many records at the same time, or what's another word to use besides update, or just affect uh, multiple records at the same time. If you need to send or do something with the entire group of people on this page here, just click this box and you've selected everyone here. Not all 65, just the 50 that are displayed here. If you need to do all 65, you would need to change the records per page to a higher number, okay? If you just need to handle a few people, change a few people, just check them onesie twosie. But let's be a bit more selective here. General admission folks. Okay. And you have a number of different features that you can use to affect selected individuals. And that's using this feature at the bottom of the page called With Checked Records. These are the things you can do with checked records. So if you just want to look at the attendee records of these folks, you can do that. And it will show you the first one and you would just simply cycle from one to the next. It'll give you an advance button in the window. If you need to edit attendee info, it'll do the same thing, but open the editing window, basically the attendee profile of each of these folks, and then let you cycle through to make whatever changes. So they don't be the same changes, but you might be affecting individuals, okay? 
editing selection and fees. So if you need to change categories, discount codes, add sessions for the same folks, you can do that to more than one record here. You need to send a group of emails, the same email, to the, this selection of people. Great. Generate badges. Do you have people who have registered late? You've already printed your uh, stock badges. You're ready for events, but you've got a few last-minute ads. You don't want to have to generate the entire list of badges again. Well, you can come into registrant list, select those people, generate badges, and just do one sheet of the name badge stock that you've programmed uh, in registration. Mass update records. So if it is the same piece of information you're adding to all of these records, you can do that with mass update records. Say you're just adding uh, an, a password field or a city state field information. It's for the same folks. For some reason that got missed, you can use mass update. Be careful with this feature because if there is any data existing in these records, it's going to erase them and put in whatever value you've entered. If you need to change this attendee status, so let's say these folks came in uh, after check-in was closed and we want to mark them as attended. We could mark them from confirmed to attended in bulk this way. And here's, I'm going to skip apply credit or create check-in alerts. You can also group attendees. As I said, you can put people together so you know they're in the same group with this feature. Okay. I don't think there's anything else here that would be of use to you. And I'm not coming up with it in my, don't have any, I've covered everything on my outlines, but again, I wanted to double check here. Yeah, okay. Well, before I go on, are there any questions about registrant lists? This is one of the bigger reports, more complicated reports uh, that are in Stova. And so I think it's would be good to pause and answer any questions you have just on this or what to do with attendee profiles. Okay, seeing none or hearing none, let's move on to some other features uh, of Stova. Sticking with reports, now we're going to go to the reports and functions section. Okay, and this is where you can also see the summary report, and I think registrant list. Yes, there's a registrant list there too. But what I want to focus on now is at the bottom of this page is a feature for custom reporting. If you need to make a special report that's not, you can't do it in for one reason or another registrant list and share it. Uh, or, or its main purpose of the report is to share, you can use custom reporting. So I'm going to create a report to send to my t-shirt vendor on all the orders received for my expo. And I'm going to click here, add report. And let's call this t-shirt orders. It's telling me, okay, I've, you've never used that name before. Thanks for that. Uh, and what fields do I want to use in this report? Very similar to the registrant list. Uh, let's get the reference number. And sure, let's get the registration date and time. And then who these folks are. I like to go first name, last name. And in case I need to contact them, I'll get email address. And nothing custom-wise there. And I'm looking for, there we go. There are my options. So let's hit T-shirts. And that's all I really need to know. Save and exit. Once again, I can rearrange these however I like. Let's just get the uh, date ordered maybe at the bottom. And I'm going to come back to these filters in a bit, but just look at all the features available for a custom report. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to talk about all of them, but let me save and stay. There's one feature here I do want to point out. 
and that is after I hit save and stay down here this direct link feature so if I want to share this report with my vendor this is how I can generate a URL then I can send to my vendor to view my report I'm going to hit save and stay to activate it I can decide what format I want that report to be seen in and I can only give them one right? if I want if they want it for download purposes I could give them Excel or a CSV file I guess I could give them a PDF if I just want them to see it on a web page I would use HTML and XML is another kind of web technology that it doesn't look very good on a web page so I'm just going to stick to a to an HTML page I have the option of a password I'm going to skip that for now so let me actually I'm going to hit save and stay and then I'm going to click on that link to see what it looks like okay well this is interesting because it's giving me the list of every registrant and whether or not they ordered a t-shirt but it would be better for my vendor if they didn't have to think about this I just want to show the people who have placed an order so I'm going to close this and go back stay I guess I'm still in this field great this is where the filters come in my standard report filters categories and statuses that's not going to help me here but I have this thing down below that called custom report filters that's going to help and let's see what options it gives me so when I activate it Ooh, look at that I got t-shirt orders so if the answer is well, what are my options all right so apparently I have to do this onesie twosie I've got four different size options I'm trying to do this quickly t-shirts 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 is equal to is equal to is equal to very quickly now I do have to change this conditional I want no one can order all these sizes so if it's if at least one of these filters is true then they'll display let's hit that save and stay button and now let's go look at my report much better much better okay and now I can hit save and exit and there is my t-shirt order so I if I'm just saving a special report for one person or one group of people that's how I can create it and share it just with a direct link but if I have multiple custom reports that I want to share with a person or a group of people uh, different vendors different results uh, I can use this feature below custom report called report users the way you use report users is you add your user and it's sort of the generic user uh, you create the username and you come up with a password P password is required I think I had a fumble finger in that one. And let's just hit save and stay and make sure I got it. Okay. And I can't, if I forget the password, I can come back here and change it. That's lovely. The report users allows me to share the reports that already exist in the system. If I want to share the summary report, I can. Of course, we're not doing hotel changes. The uh, RSVP invite list we'll talk about in a minute. But here is the list of custom reports that I have created and if I want to share them both I can add them here okay I can create direct links to these summary report RSVP list but again I'm trying to share multiple reports with somebody uh, so I'm just going to keep that so I've got two reports I'm sharing with a user named Steve and this time this is the URL that I would be sharing with a person or everyone who can has a listed under here. Okay. 
So I'm going to open that. It's going to ask me for my name and password. And now this is the other advantage of this report. Move my head bubble out of the way is that now my viewer has a choice on how they want to see this report. They can see it on a web page. If they need the XML, again, a not very attractive web page, but mostly text-based, they can. They need to download it as a CSV or Excel or PDF. They can do that. That's their choice, right? So advantage of user reports is sharing multiple reports in a manner where they can decide how they want to receive it or view it. Okay, now as you can see, if I need to edit these reports, uh, actually I need to go back, move my head back up. If I need to edit what's in these reports, I can by clicking edit. If I want to use one of these as the basis of a new report, I can clone them. If I no longer need these reports, I can delete them. Same thing down here for the users, uh, changing reports that can be seen or just simply completely delete them. Okay, that's custom reporting and report users. And again, these features are for sharing reports with people who do not have Stova accounts. So it's also lovely for, I don't know if you ever are in the situation where somebody wants to see a registration list and they keep asking over and over again. Well, you can share one report with them and tell them just simply refresh the page. So you can go back to this report. It's dynamic. It will give you the most up-to-date information. You tell me what you want to see in the report, and you don't have to keep bothering me. Okay, you put it nicer than that. All right. <laughs> what are some other reports here that we think are very useful to you that I want to go through? Uh, one is the uh, duplicate report. Okay. So that happens. Somebody registers more than once, and even if you have put in some sort of restrictions to try to prevent that, it can happen. And you would like to see uh, who these people are. There is a report for that. Click on the duplicate report, and you will be taken to this. It will show you who's a duplicate based on their email address or by their first and last name. Okay. Now, a word about the duplicate list. There can be situations where you have duplicates, but it's not a problem. The duplicate list will show you people who have confirmed registrations or incomplete registrations or canceled registrations, okay? By default, you can then use this selection filter if you just wanna see who has duplicate confirmed registrations, because that's gonna be a problem if you have uh, a limit on your event. You've got two people taking up two seats and they should only have one. Okay, that's a problem. If you have a confirmed registration and an incomplete registration for the same person, that's not a problem in the system, because or for you, because you know that they've gotten in the system once as a confirmed, okay? If it bothers you reporting-wise, there's a way to take care of that, which I'll show you in just a sec, okay? The other nice thing about this report is that you can get more information about what is causing the duplication by clicking on the name of the duplicate and seeing what's going on here. Oh, I see. Person has the same first name, last name, and they're coming in with two different email addresses. I can go in and change one of these. I could cancel one of these if I wanted to, uh, or I could leave it, or I could change which, you know, who this person is. Maybe this is, maybe they submitted uh, their spouse or their children, and they just use their email address over again, and you, you know, that doesn't work for you. All sorts of different uh, options or situations there. You decide how best to use it. Anything else with duplicates? I think anybody else have more than two? I must have done some multiples. Yeah, same thing here, email address. Okay, well, that's the most likely use case scenario. So I think that's a useful, uh, useful address or useful report, the duplicate report. Let's go back to reports and functions. If you are 
accepting file uploads or image uploads or photo uploads during your registration process, the way to get all those files downloaded to you is over here called the file upload report. If you click on this, you'll be taken to a page. It'll tell you how many different basically files you will need to download. Now, it, I, well, it tells you over here how many files per zip. So what that's telling you is it's going to put all these images or documents into a compressed file and let you download that. And once it's downloaded to your computer, you click on it and it uncompresses. And there you can see all the files. Okay. There's also a way to uh, download individuals, which I'd be happy to show you. And that's available back on the registrant list. I have made a special view to show me files that came in for downloads. Let's see if we can find that. It's in my logos. There we go. So if I just need to individually download files, uh, I can do that. Uh, do not be alarmed by the title downloadable download file. That's just an instruction for you that this is a link. The file name is, if you have not made any adjustments, it's whatever the client has called the file when they uploaded or there is a way for you to customize the file name on import that would be in the attendee info question itself for uploading the file or or photo okay back to reports and functions and that's the duplicate report um actually i should stay on registrant list because one thing it does seem to bother some event coordinators are the incompletes uh, some people are really bothered by incompletes. As a reminder is when your registrations or registrants are going through the process, if they submit successfully, they'll be called to confirm registration. But if they stop in the registration process for whatever reason, and they do not submit, after 30 minutes, they will be marked as incomplete. They'll get a, the email triggered for incomplete saying, hey, you, you didn't finish. Do you want to go back? Uh, but if for some reason, you want to see who are these folks who are incomplete. Are they a client who has, you know, who is tech challenged uh, with uh, registration sites that you want to follow up with, or you, for some reason you just want to know? There is a filter on the registrant list for incomplete registrations, and that is one way to see them. From my event, I don't have any incompletes. Uh, you can also find them through the registrant list because that's one of the statuses of incompletes. And you have under registration reports on reports and functions, the incomplete report. So three different ways that you can find those folks. Uh, and I, unfortunately, I, I wish I did have some incompletes in this system because there are ways, is a way for you to uh, change an incomplete to a confirmed and that's simply to locate them, go into their attendee profile, and they have very limited options. And one of the options at the top is a button that says convert to confirmed. So if they have checked all the buttons you need them to check and for some reason just stop the process or you're helping them with a manual process, that's the way to convert incompletes to confirmed manually. Okay, duplicate report. The uh, last report I wanted to show you was, or talk about, is this the RSVP invite list. This report connects to the Stova marketing module. And if you remember what I've talked about marketing module, that is a core module, just like registrations, and core modules can work independent of one another or they can be linked. So in this case, you have an email invitation in Stova and a mailing list, and the invitation is linked to your registration site. In that use case, you can use the RSVP invite list here to see what the status of those invitations are. Have they followed through and registered for this event? Uh, or are they still pending or did they decline your invitation? 
that's what this report is for. You can see the information also back in the marketing module, but it's available to you here on the registration site through the RSVP invite list. And if you remember, this was one of the programmed uh, reports that you could use for report users. Okay, anything else reports wise? Now I wanna just, I'm gonna move into a few of the other admin features that may be useful to you. Uh, one of them we've talked about back when we, at the last session of Event Builder, when we're getting our site ready, is that there's a feature here that you can use to clear out the test registrations. And you want to clear out the registrations before you go live, so especially if you have a capacity limit on the event or on the categories, you don't want test registrations counting against that. Okay, so that's our best practice recommendation. Clear test registrations, go live with your registration site. But as I mentioned, there is a way to clear incompletes. If incompletes bother you, you just want a clean slate or you want to clean out the duplicate list, you can come and use this feature where you can clear incomplete registrations. Okay. Now, another feature I want to point out is this, the import registrations list. In my use case at the big top of the uh, session, I mentioned, so if somebody gives you a spreadsheet and you need to put those names into your registration site, either just to get them recorded or so that you can check them in, use the check-in features of the registration site or whatever. In fact, that's a use case quite often is perhaps your client has or your partner has taken care of the registration sites, but it's your job to handle check-in, just get a spreadsheet, create a Stover registration site just for purposes of check-in. You can do that. And this is how you can import from a spreadsheet. I'm gonna click import and I'm gonna find my spreadsheet file. You are right there, okay? Uh, I, it is a good idea to have a header row on your spreadsheets to say what those columns do. Uh, I'm gonna bring everybody as a confirmed registration. You can only import into one category. I'm gonna call these folks just general admission. And next I hit upload file. The next screen you see is the mapping feature. So. Here's my header row, and now I'm gonna go through and say which fields from my spreadsheet go into which fields in my registration site. I don't need to worry about that. Let's just do that and that. We'll call that phone number. Now, one word about this is if the headers uh, of your spreadsheet match what's inside your registration site, the system's smart enough to be able to suggest that those are already matching and you can confirm that. Oh, yes, and you must have an email address field. Don't really care about the website. Next, I'm going to click Import Data, and we'll see if there's... So it happened very fast but what you actually saw was a validation process go through. So what it did is it checked all my fields to make sure that the answers in those fields did not conflict with anything in my registration site. If I had had a state field, for example, that only had the abbreviations and somebody was trying to enter the full name of states, that would flag that entry as an error and it would tell me in the list here on displayed here what the problems are. I'd need to go back, change that, either change my my uh, attendee info field or change it on the spreadsheet to make that work. But the spreadsheet passed with flying colors and then it went through a process of uploading that information and now it's telling me it's complete. Lovely. And after it does that, it takes me to show that I've got those 20 records now add it. Okay. Now these people haven't paid. You know, again, in my use case scenario, these are sponsors and 
and don't have to. So if I need them to pay, I need to come up with some other solution for that, for getting the money. All right. Well, with that, I've actually come to the end of my demonstration. I told you I would try to get you out of here early so we can uh, turn this over for questions on anything we've covered today with all these different reports, uh, with all these different features. So you can uh, handle changes to your attendees, handle refunds, balancing the books, some of the different options for sharing reports outside of your unit or even outside the university. Uh, and so I'm going to open it up. Any questions about what we've covered today or you have a specific use case you're looking to find a solution or anything to do with Stova. Just go ahead and either put it in the chat or unmute your microphone. Uh, I'm just going to blather away until either I hear somebody's microphone or I see something in the chat. One thing I wanted to mention is if you uh, have not had the pleasure of seeing one of our other master classes, uh, we have just posted uh, Event Builders Part 1 through 4 on our YouTube channel, and that address will be coming up here in a second. You should be able to see a link on our support site. We'll take you to that YouTube channel. But if you, again, want to do a deep dive into the registration site, probably the or registration module, probably the biggest module of uh, Stova and the most used, you can now see those videos. They're open to the public. Uh, see them at your leisure. So uh, this is the last training seminar of this term. Uh, in a week or so, we'll be announcing our training sessions for the spring term. Uh, and I'm just going to throw up our support slide here, the different options you have so that, you know, when you leave a session and that's when you start thinking of the questions you wanted to ask when you were part of the webinar, uh, this is how you can reach us. You can just post the question in our Slack channel and uh, share it with the other users who may have the solutions for you. Uh, you can also check out our support site, stova.asu.edu, or you can send us an email, stova at ksu.edu um, and as I said there's the uh, there's the address for our YouTube channel where we have many how-to videos um, we can set up a time with you so we have a one-on-one -on -one consultation with your particular needs or problems uh, just reach out I just send us an email okay well I'm not hearing a lot of chatter I'm not seeing anything on the slack so um, I'm assuming you're all raring to go to get back to your registration sites and use what you've learned the last hour. So uh, I, I, since this is the last, have a good holiday uh, and have a good rest of your day. Thank you.